Okay, today I want to talk about Flexbox. So I've already done a video on CSS grids. Now I want to go back a little bit and talk about Flexbox. This was one of the early versions of updated layout that came with CSS3. So you had Flexbox, and there were a few different versions of that along the way, and then CSS Grid. The difference between them is that Flexbox is really good in one direction. So if you want to talk about a column or a row, Flexbox is fantastic. You want to go more complicated than that? Build like a grid? CSS Grid. That's what you want to use. So let's talk about Flexbox. I've got a simple page here. I have a div that contains all the content on the page. Inside of that, I've got three things. There's a header, a section, and then a footer right here. So header, section, footer. Those are the three things that are inside here. So the green part at the top, this is the header. Down here at the bottom, this is the footer. And then we have these three parts right here, the gold, the yellow, and the blue. Those three are inside of section class content. If I open that up, we can see inside of here, there is a nav, a main, and an aside. That's what these three parts here. That's the nav, that's the main, this is the aside. These three are inside of a section. So that's the layout we have for the page. Now I'm going to use Flexbox to rearrange this. Right now this looks pretty close to what you would get without doing any sort of layout work because section, nav, main, footer, header, these are all block elements. So they're going to want to fill up all their width, whatever the parent's width is, they want to fill that and they'll just stack from top to bottom in the order that they're written on the page. Okay, so that's Flexbox. Um, what it looks like when you don't give it any properties, this is what it would do. Now, I've actually got some Flexbox properties in here using sort of the default values. This is what I'm getting. So let's take a look and see how this works. There is a display property on my container. That's the div that holds everything here. It's set to display flex. That's the first thing you need to do in order to make this work. So I've got the container and then I've got the content. These are both using display flex. Those are the two places on the page where I've got display flex one to create the column and one I'm going to create a row. So how do we do column or row? Well, that's the property flex direction. So the default is column and that's what I've got here. So display flex, flex direction column. That's what's giving me the top to bottom with one, two, three parts. So the children of container, just those children, <coughs> pardon me. We have the header, the footer, and that section with the class content. Those three things, just like my comment here says, inside the container, so inside this, three children, they're using flex direction column. If I change this to row, now this is what I get. One, two, three columns. So the flex direction, I'm setting up what's known as the main axis. So the main axis is now going across, creating a row. If I go back to column, now the main direction is a column. There's also column reverse and row reverse. It just flips the order. So here's the header, here's the section content, and here's the footer. One, two, three. We could do row reverse. Puts the header over here, the footer over here, the other content in the middle. Oh, we're back to row. There we are. So one direction, that's what I was saying before. There's this one direction thing with flex. It works really well if you want to build a row or a column, just a single one. So I'm going to put this back to column. That's the way I wanted it. I want the header on top, the footer on the bottom. Now the stuff that's in the middle. So I'm going to go to content, which is this middle part with these three things. I'm going to say it's display flex and it's flex direction instead of row or sorry instead of column which is the default I'm going to make it row. Now if you don't specify a flex direction for something that's display flex that's inside of something else it'll take the opposite so I can remove this property and I'm still going to get this appearance this row. So we've got a column for the outer container and a row for the thing that's inside. Display flex, flex direction row. There's a flex wrap property as well uh, there's a property called flex flow where you can combine these two things. It's a shorthand. 
I prefer with the flex flow to write these two out. There's some other properties. Uh, we'll talk about the flex property. That's better as a shortcut or as a shorthand property. I prefer to split these two, flex direction and flex wrap, into two different parts. Just makes it easier to read, in my opinion. Okay, so I've got the row created. Now we have a couple of other properties here that talk about how these elements are being spaced out, both along the main axis, so this is a row, this direction, how they're spaced out, and then cross axis, the main axis is going this way, so the cross axis is the up down, because this is a row, so cr cutting across the row is the up down. Now stretch, cross axis, means, hey, I've got three things that have the same height. The background is stretched to fill the whole space. Instead of stretch, we could use flex start. So it's the start up here. End is the bottom. We could do flex end, like that. Now, this one is the biggest, so it's filling up the most space. These ones are smaller, they don't need all the space, so that's why we're seeing this purple background. The purple background is actually the content, this color right here. It's the background color for the content in behind it, the content class. So we've got flex start, flex end, stretch to fill the whole thing, and center, which centers it vertically. So it doesn't stretch to fill the space, it only takes up the space it needs, but it's centered cross axis. Justify content, I'm going to put this back to stretch. Justify content is along the main axis. Now if your content fills up all that space, you're not going to see a lot of difference between these. We've got space between, space around. Space around would create a space here, in between here and here, in between here and here, and at the very end as well. That's what space around gives me. Space between is just in these two spots here between the first and second, between the second and third items inside this row. We can also do a center, flex and flex start. These aren't going to make much of a difference to us. We're not seeing any difference appearing here simply because our content is filling the space. But if you had smaller items or items where you specified hey, this piece is only 100 by 100, this is only 100 by 100, this is only 100 by 100, and I've got lots of space, then you're going to see the difference. You're going to see the, the spaces appearing between them. All right, coming down to the final thing. So everything we've talked, to, talked about so far has to do with the container. This div with the class container, where we set display flex, that is the container. There's either containers or items. So the container is the thing that you set up and you give it a direction. Again, we flex, we gave it a direction. So those are the containers. Now, the stuff inside there, that's the items. This one actually happened to be both an item and a container. Header's just an item, footer's just an item. Inside of content, we have three items here. So let's take a look at those. Flex. Now this is a shorthand that I do prefer the shorthand instead of the individual properties. There's three properties here. Flex grow, flex shrink, and flex basis. Flex grow. This is like creating a ratio to say how big something can become relative to the other items in the row. So I've got a 1, a 3, and a 2. So his width along the axis, along the main axis, his size is 1. A ratio of 1 to 3. 1 to 3 to 2. So whatever the space is across the whole thing, I can grow this and shrink it, change it. This is going to get 2, this is going to get 1, and this is going to get 3 portions of the entire thing. So from here to here, this is 3 out of 6. So that's half. This is 2 out of 6. That's a third. This is 1 out of 6. That's how this breaks it up. So flex grow tells it how much to fill up of the available space. Flex shrink, I said they're all equal, they'll all shrink equal to each other. And then flex basis, this is the default size. If there's 
too, uh, too little space or whatever, this is the default size that it's going to try to use. So if I've said that the row is allowed to wrap, I set flex wrap on the parent here. It's no wrap, which is the default. If I say to wrap, and these default sizes are bigger than the available space, that's what's going to drive it to wrap. So I set 80, 150, 100. Those are the default starting sizes. But it will try to do the flex grow and flex shrink to make everything fit based on whether or not we've said wrap or no wrap. And that's it. That's Flexbox. So we have containers and items. On the containers, we set display flex and then give a direction. Column row, column reversed, row reversed. Then on the items, we'll define a flex. You want to create ratios? Great way to do it. You want them all the same size? Just set flex. You can even leave off the other ones. The only thing that you have to put in is just the first one. So I can get rid of all of these. There we go. One, three, two. Same size. Now, if I go back, you'll notice there was some difference here because it was trying to force things that weren't specified up in the other two elements. So you can play around with that as well. So the items, you've got the flex. At a minimum, you want to set up the flex to give a ratio to say how big the columns are relative to one another or how big the rows are. If this is column, one, three, two. So it's trying to set that up and we can come in and give a size. Notice how this got a little bit bigger. That was 100. There's 200 pixels. One, 200 pixels. Shrink is one and then 100 pixels. So these are the default. These are kind of like the minimum sizes. There's 200, there's 200, there's 100. So when they grow, when it gets bigger, if the content is larger and fills up and expands, this is the ratio that it's going to want to try to fulfill, 1, 3, 2. These sizes, the 200, 200, 100, that's the default, that's our minimum, that's our starting point. Then going from that, we use the flex grow property to grow and establish the ratio between them. And then the last thing, just remember, justify content and align items. Align items is cross-axis. So if we're talking about a column, which is what we've defined here, flex direction column, align items. There we are. This one's centered, this one's centered, this one's centered. But these two fill up all the space. So you don't get to see it, that it's really centered. This one, you see, because the content isn't big enough to fill the whole thing. Justify content, flex start. So this is along the main axis. So we've got flex start would be everything trying to align to the top, flex end, everything trying to align to the bottom. And center, well, it's going to do the same thing because our content is filling up all that space. So. Justify content is along the main axis, which is set by flex direction. Align items is across that. It's cross axis. So it's perpendicular to whatever the flex direction is. All right, so I hope that helps you out. I will save this as a code gist and put the link in the comments or in the uh, description for the video so you can download it and play with that experiment as you're watching this. All right, hope this has been helpful. Um, if you found it useful, please share it. And as always, Thanks for watching.